Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood Cone Dodger here. You remember like a week ago when I recorded that Cone on the Road? Yeah, it turns out that was five months ago. I literally thought this morning that, yeah, it's only been maybe a month or two since I did that Cone on the Road. No, it was literally before the birth of our child. <laughs> when she just turned five months. So, uh, yeah, apparently that whole like time compression parenthood thing it's real. That's That actually happens. So today I am on the road because I am headed to Raleigh to look at a car. I'm actually going to go observe an automobile. There's a whole sequence that leads us to there, but uh, basically that's, that's the name of the game today. But I figured uh, since I have some time in the car, this is very rare for me these days. Actually, it's not super rare. Like I, I still do all of the family grocery shopping at the moment and I and I go it alone because we'd rather not try to take a un, unhappy to be in public and in very germ spongy baby out to the grocery store every week uh, so I just do it I do it on my own uh, for the time being she's getting to the point where I'm sure she's gonna start tagging along but that's how it's been but yeah I get a decent amount of time in the car by myself currently, but it's not very often that I go off and do something like this where I'm in the car for quite a long while by myself. So why not? Plus I got, you know, something to talk about, obviously. I kind of hit on last time that, uh, you know, things were seemingly kind of changing. Obviously the fact that myself and Peyton have become parents is a very big change to both of our lives. Uh, a hell of a lot of, oh, who are you? I don't know what that is. Some kind of early 70s, maybe late 60s muscle thing. Almost looks AMC, right? Hopefully you can see that. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. I, you know, being an independent contractor basically, or really just being a, a freelance creator doing that and trying to raise a child. Very difficult. Uh, we also got smacked in the face with, you know, we, we knew having a child is expensive and we live in America where that kind of stuff is pretty much in the hands of the parents to pay for it. Insurance is only going to do so much. Um, and like I said, we pretty much were prepared for that. And then Paint got sick immediately after. Paint had uh, had to have surgery a month after that. Because of the way things worked out, insurance basically didn't cover any of the surgery because when the baby was born, we had to change policies. And when we changed policies, we had to get a, an interim insurance. Uh, it's a it's a mess. It is a it is a logistical nightmare. I'm not going to drag you through that whole ordeal. I'm going to just say, ouch. It was and is continuing to be pretty painful. Combining that with the fact that, like I was discussing five months ago, things are changing. Like the, the whole, I mean, the world is changing. Obviously the economy is changing. But more than anything, I feel like the industry that I work in is changing a lot. There's just a ton less momentum in that world currently. Across the board, viewership is down, sponsorships are down. Like it's just, it, it's just a, a tougher time right now. Oh my God, this guy could not turn any slower. <laughs> It's pretty sporty. It <laughs> kept up. I was shifting at 3,000 RPM, but still, uh, you know, it didn't. It didn't embarrass itself. Uh, where was I? Yeah, I mean, it's just times are difficult right now, and then you know the whole Twitch sphere kind of got shifted because everyone started really digging down into these subathons where it's basically viewer manipulation. Sorry, I know, I've got friends that do this. 
I have friends of mine that I think are very good friends that, that do subathons. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's manipulating the system to trap viewers in your channel so that they basically keep feeding your machine instead of going anywhere else. Essentially, that's how I think subathons work. Uh, I, I understand the, the grand idea of it is that you're supposed to be uh, also providing additional content. You're going to be showing things you don't usually see. I get it. I'm not, I'm not just going to poo-poo on their parades, but at the end of the day, it's just not a, not a super healthy thing for the people doing it. And I don't think it's a healthy thing for the audience to be so like entrapped in it. And it's pretty harmful to anybody that's in, in the general like vicinity of that personality. Uh, and especially when it's multiple of them, multiple of, of them over the course of a few months, it, it made things really difficult. I mean, it's part of the business too. Like it's, it's, it's part of the deal. Uh, that's that's part of being an independent creator is you have to find new, unique, interesting ways to keep people engaged. You gotta you gotta try and and make it work. You gotta try to get your piece of the pie. And if that pie is getting smaller and smaller, then you need to try to get as much of it as you can. I get it. I understand. And I understand that I have historically been a failure in that regard. Like I'm not very good at just like trying to to grab as much as I possibly can at every opportunity. Uh, I'm just, no, nah, I'm, I'm just frankly a more modest person than that. That's just not, that's just not how I am programmed to be. Um, I am much more of the mind of I get what I deserve and, and I get out of it what I am putting into it and not much more, not much less. Doesn't mean that it's not uh, not hard and harder than I feel like it needs to be. There's certainly some things that could happen in this industry that would help independent creators not struggle so much, but that's just not gonna change. It's not gonna happen anytime soon, I am afraid. I was pretty heavy into finding other lines of work uh, in, the, in the time of which we were last talking, I suppose you would say, in the, in the cone of the road. I was pretty heavy into trying to work my way into the video editing world. Unfortunately, that did not pan out exactly as I'd hoped. It did help immensely. Um, I was able to work with the automation team for a while there and help them with a big project. I think technical wise that went very well. I think that that team was very pleased with my work and and I think we made a great product. Um, but just kind of like everything in, in this realm right now, it just didn't do very well. It didn't it didn't sell very well because it was a pretty long format thing. It was pretty drawn out and uh, to be a businessman. The market's just not ripe for that right now. The market is ripe for short, fast content that is consumable on the flick of a thumb. Uh, the problem with that is that kind of content doesn't pay creators. Like that kind of content doesn't, you can't make a living off of doing that stuff unless you're talking sponsorships and doing paid product placement and stuff like that. And that's just a totally different ballpark. Like that's a, a completely different form of media and I guarantee you that most of the people that do the kind of stuff that I do don't want to get into that stuff because it's no longer an art. It is simply advertising. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. So that didn't work out great. And then I got lined up with another one that just totally ghosted me completely after I had already done a good bit of work on it. I don't know what the deal is there. Maybe it'll come around. Maybe. It's possible. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I was pretty discouraged with that. It, it was it was eye-opening enough that I think it's pretty 
bold of me to think or assume that there's a place for me to interject into that world. I'll keep my eyes peeled. I'm keeping my ears to the ground because I think I'm good at it, <laughs> honestly. Um, I don't usually say things like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not very boastful of my abilities uh, on anything, but I think I actually have a pretty good eye for video editing. I think I'm pretty efficient at it, and I think I make better products than other people make. Um, so maybe that'll come around. Maybe maybe that'll come through someday. I don't know. We'll see. I was pretty set on scaling way back, um, putting out some applications to, to work retail to make ends meet, and this is where things get really complicated for me, is that even though things are declining, things are hard, whoo, that's a big exploded tire. <laughs> Yikes. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, as the, as the audience shrinks, it feels like the support grows. And that's both super, that's both super encouraging and confusing. Like, everything I do is less and less popular constantly. But yet the people that stay just keep driving me more. Like, they just keep supporting me more and, and, and encouraging me and pushing me along. And it's like, how is it that there's people that are so certain that what I do is good and what I make is well done, that they're willing to, you know, basically support me at a very high level to do this stuff, and yet the <laughs> the results of that are never good. Like it's it's just been free fall, absolute free fall. I, that's it's so bizarre. It is truly truly bizarre how it is possible that it works out that way, but that's the way it works out. Uh, and in fact, I had somebody within the community step up and especially after the, the, the surgery ordeal with paint, basically, I, I, I hate to put it this way, but they saved us from the brink, essentially. Like, I, I was just blindly throwing debt at the wall. I was just living on plastic, as they say, uh, to make ends meet. And if it wasn't for their help, then <laughs> I would have been royally screwed. And I'm sure we would have made ends meet somewhere, but we probably both would have ended up working crappy jobs. And we might still. That's, it's not like, I didn't, we didn't, the lottery was not hit, but somebody helped out enough to get us to a point where it feels like their shoes on our feet, you know? That's that's the level of support that was offered there. And beyond that, even beyond like that, you know, grand gesture, people have just been super great at helping with our situation, even though I feel like maybe the content hasn't been there. Maybe maybe the stuff I've been making isn't the greatest stuff. Like especially on Twitch, I feel like nothing nothing's really been super well received or well loved on Twitch in probably the better part of a year. I, I feel like I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of there, you know what I mean? Like I'm just, I'm just making stuff <laughs> uh, and, and people hang out. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels like, it feels like we hang out and I don't know if there is as much entertainment in it these days. I pushed towards like bringing more of that in, trying to get more involved with like the automation and PMG stuff again, because that was stuff that was very well received. Uh, it has a ton of updates. There's a lot of momentum there, and <laughs> it just it just it just isn't it doesn't it doesn't hit like it used to, um, and that's just how it is. That's how that's how this all works, and that's part of that's part of the business. That's part of this lifestyle that I have chosen to live. 
and I just have to live with the idea that the, the next big thing is going to happen and not necessarily know if it is going to happen. I feel like this might be looking a little too far back, so I'm going to move it down. And then I'm going to regret that later, because I don't have the video preview thing with me, and I have no idea what that's looking at. I have it on wide, so it should be fine. Anyway, how about we get out of the meta weeds? Weeds! Um, well, we just got back from New York. We just had our first trip with Baby, and that actually went super well. Uh, I covered this a pretty good bit on stream, but it was actually... I would almost say it was fun. It was exhausting. It was stressful, but I think we both went into it with this attitude of, this is going to be bad. Uh, because we both, you know, we both basically work from home, and she doesn't get out very much. So what was it going to be like doing a 2,600-mile total trip, I think? What was that? No, 1,300 miles. I don't remember. It was a lot of miles. <laughs> uh, I think 1,300. But still, it was a ton of driving, but we got to see a lot of her family, and uh, Baby got to meet a lot of relatives and stuff that, who knows, that might be literally the only time that they ever, they ever meet, and that was really important to me. Um, if you aren't aware, uh, Paint My Wife is an indigenous peoples, Native American, Indian, whatever you would like, from what I could tell, the they as a people aren't very hung up on it. They are just, uh, honestly, that whole experience of, of getting to know her family has been really great, actually. They're just, they're just kind of like nice people. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that the way their tribe works basically is the heritage of the family passes down through the mother's side of the family, so she is basically a continuation of that uh, of that line. So there was a ceremony that we needed to attend up there, which was super cute and it was really nice. And uh, uh, overall, that went really well. It did lead me to a interesting observation: is that um, the Kia Soul might be one of the least comfortable cars to drive on a long road trip from the back seat ever. I thought our previous Elantra was the least comfortable car to drive on a long road trip, but that was from the front seat. I took the duty of riding in the back seat the whole time because, uh, you know, she's not old enough yet to just be back there on her own the whole time. Pink gets car sick in the back seat, especially in that car. Uh, oh my God, it's bad. Like, I think that might be listed as torture. I I am not sure that that car passes the Geneva Convention rules and restrictions. It's pretty awful. <laughs> and uh, I've already been hemming and hawing about possibly, man, I'm almost tempted to make this like a, like a two-parter, honestly. I think I may. Yeah, I think I will. So there's gonna be a second cone on the road. I don't know, just kind of the future of the fleet in general. Well, if I'm gonna do that, is there anything else I wanted to go over with, you know, life and, and stuff? Well, I did start back up the second YouTube channel. I know that sounds ridiculous. If you're struggling with one, why have two? And the reason is, it just came to my attention that currently, having very significant mixed media on your channel is a drawback currently. Um, basically, if I'm doing gaming stuff and in real life stuff, those are two drastically different topics. I thought I was going to be okay because I basically was going to do just automotive stuff. Whether that's gaming or real life, it's just automotive. But I think that divide is not strong enough. There are people that want to watch me working on cars, my adventures with cars in real life, or just my adventures in life like this. And there are people that want to watch gaming content. There's some overlap, like that Venn diagrams, you know, got some overlap, but that overlap is so small that the way YouTube sees it is, 
only 50% of your viewers want to see your videos at all. And honestly, that number is way smaller than that. <laughs> but I'm just, we'll just use that as an example. So because that be the case, if, if only 50% of people are watching those two, you know, individual styles of content, then they kind of just punish you essentially and don't, you know, they don't want to push your content because they don't think that uh, people are finding it engaging, but it might just be that they want to watch one thing and not the other. The, the way the algorithm works, it's, it's not a person, there's no human doing this. It's a, it's a sequence of numbers, and if the numbers don't line up, then you get the cut, and that's how it works. So, pushing back to separating the gaming content out, but because I feel like the real life content does better than gaming content these days, the gaming content is now going off to the little channel, which is now called Cone Plays, and the real life stuff, whether it be autocross, whether it be working on cars, whether it be random parked, whether it be cones on the road, anything that's real life is gonna stay here on the Cone Dodger 240 channel. And, and that's how it's gonna be. Um, this will probably be, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what the future holds. Um, I have made the commitment that uh, if, if I don't see a sustainable future by the end of this year for this, then I am going to cut back to doing it part-time again. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'll ever stop because it's such a big part of my life and it's such a huge part of how I express my creativity that I don't think I could ever stop and, and not get just horribly depressed. But I'm, I'm willing to you know step back to doing it a couple days a week here and there uh, throwing a couple of videos up every now and again, doing it on a on a similar basis to how I did it, you know, back when I worked at Home Depot, and and I'm okay with that. Um, I, I've come to grips with that, so we'll see. Who knows? I could be totally wrong. Maybe maybe the next big thing is right on the horizon. Maybe maybe something is about to finally you know catch a little bit. But if it doesn't. I'm not, uh, I'm not horribly worried about it. I'm a little bit worried about what's going on with traffic ahead of me. This is weird. Huh. I'm sure it's fine, right? So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Like I said, I'm not, I was pretty down in the dumps about it before, but uh, I, I think I'm at a point now where we are comfortable enough and I'm comfortable enough that we'll just go throughout this year and see see how things go and hope that, uh, you know, it, it, it works out one way or the other. And, I don't know, maybe, maybe by some chance uh, something comes together with the video editing stuff because, like I said, I, I do feel like there's potential there. I feel like I've got... The, the necessary skills, I just need to, uh, oh, we're cutting a tree down. Big old tree. Bye tree. I, I just feel like uh, it's, it's time. It's time to make the call there. I guess I'll briefly touch on the fact that uh, I am really enjoying parenthood. I kind of suspected that I would I also kind of suspected that it would be extremely stressful, but um, overall, it has given my life so much more meaning. I feel like I had reached a point in my life where I had kind of started to run out of motivation in some ways. Uh, I, you know, I just I started to not have something. I don't know, maybe it's some kind of instinctual need within within my brain or something, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I felt like I needed to have that kind of uh, connection with a human being where it felt like my life experience could help their life experience, you know what I mean? 
I guess I guess there's just there's no other connection you have with another human that that quite works like that. The challenges have been plentiful. There has been. Come on, what you're doing is illegal. Oh my gosh. There's some interesting drivers out today, let me tell you. No thanks, no wave, no blinker. Cool. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. The world is an interesting place. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're both very, very new to the whole concept. Neither of us were really, like neither of us were the kind of people that hung around people that had kids a lot, uh, especially Paint. This is all extremely new to her, uh, but I think we're just, we're navigating it the best we can. I'm very proud of all that we've done so far in these five months. I feel like, uh, honestly, even the nine months before that, from, from day one, we have put 100% of our care into that little bean, and I think it shows, and I think she'll know. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. I mean, I don't, I don't have to prove myself to you or anybody as far as that stuff goes. It just to me, like, I, I just know that for me, I feel proud of the, the, the place where we're at right now. That was a trailer that was missing two wheels. This has been an interesting trip so far. All right, that's it for state of the life, state of the channel, I do believe. Uh, I'm sure I forgot something, but who cares? <laughs> Thank you all for your support and tune in tomorrow, I guess, for the Cone on the Road fleet update video 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 okay bye